we are turning our attention now to Taraba concerning the governorship elections. And as you've seen, uh, Chief Davis Abukente joins us now. He's a former aspirant for the governorship uh, seat. That slot, as a matter of fact. Thank you for coming on this morning again. Yeah, thank Chief. you very much. Uh, thank you, viewers. Well, can, can we say the elections have come and gone? Because, I mean, results have been called, uh, even though some candidates may think otherwise. But um, probably you start by telling us, what is your impression of how the elections turned out? Okay, like you rightly said, the elections uh, have come and gone. Uh, elections have been won and lost by some people. Um, but for us in the APC in Taraba, we are feeling very, very bad to have lost the election. And uh, we are looking forward to embarking on massive reconciliation in order to prepare the party for next rounds of elections. Mm. Well, it's interesting how you say you're feeling very bad because the, the candidate of your party, Senator Bwacha, has uh, called the winner of the elections to congratulate him. Um, I, I, at least I saw a tweet uh, from Senator Bwacha congratulating uh, the winner. Um, and the winner, Mr. Uh, Colonel Kefas, has... Um, responded mm. to that particular tweet, which was so surprising. And it turns out that the, the battle wasn't exactly between the APC and the PDP. It looked like it was a real close call between the PDP and the NNPP. So was the APC overrating itself um, in this particular elections? Or, or precisely what, what resulted in the sort of results that we saw coming out from Taraba? Yeah, you know, we told you from the beginning that... Uh the conflict within our party was uh, a very big one and that we needed to have uh, taken steps to resolve the issues. Because the issues were not resolved, uh, of course, APC was, uh, I think I told you in this studio, that the APC was, uh, uh, was hardly going to make the 25% required to be count counted uh, as one of the states. Uh, of course, we were expecting nothing uh, better than that because of the conflict that had uh, chopped all our members. Uh, for, for instance, the NNPP votes of uh, 200 and something thousand, 99% of APP members, uh, NNPP members, were from the APC. So, so APC voted for the NNPP? I mean, most of the members, the camp, oh. uh, during the crisis, most of them left for NNPP. So you can't come back and say, uh, we're not happy no, about No, we're not happy the, because if the issues the were APC resolved, Mal, but if, if the issues were resolved, if the issues were resolved at the appropriate time by our party, uh, if you, you, okay, you can see Senator Boacha, even though we didn't uh, I mean, perform well, he made up to 143,000 votes or 144,000 votes. Added to that of the NMPP, that would be a very far gap between the APC and the PDP. So wait, wouldn't it have been better if the APC had won the elections and then you begin your reconciliation on a winning note being in power? Yeah, you know, this is a, it's a matter of, uh, a matter of uh, injury to people's uh, consciences. You, you saw the level of the conflict. We, I think we are one of the states that have appeared on your television more than any other state in the country trying to argue out our issues. And uh, you should know the conflict was very, very severe. And uh, it was not been, it, there was no help coming from anywhere. No help from the National Secretary of our party. And uh, that, is the, that is where we found ourselves, where we are today. But it's a very, a very sad uh, moment for us, for a party that was ready to take government house, coming toward uh, in an election. Is it, is it a really sad one for you? Because, I mean, uh, I've read in different places that you, you're not exactly so sad because you say, they say you delivered one or two of your candidates in that election. I only delivered my, I delivered my candidate, my Senate candidate. I'm sure you remember when I was here the last time, I told you that uh, through the courts, we got the ticket of the Senate back to my camp from the uh, camp of uh, St. Tobacha. And uh, uh, during the election, we got the guy deliver. He's the Senate, senator elect for Southern Taraba as we speak. So, uh, and then we also 
got the House of Reps uh, candidate delivered from our from my, from the southern part of the state. So, Even though he doesn't come from my camp, but uh, uh, when we were voting for the Senate, we didn't feel like uh, going out of the party, so we all voted for the two of them. And both of them won the And they're the only people that won the election at that level. Apart from the House of Reps that was produced on the Mambla Plateau, uh, that is uh, Mam uh, Sadauna Gashaka Kurmi. They also have a House of Reps. But all of the elections were lost by the, P by the APC in Taraba. We produced only one senator from Southern Taraba, my candidate, and then a member of the House of Reps from the South representing Ukari, uh, Ibi federal constituency, that is my constituency, my federal constituency, and then one member of House of Reps from uh, Sadauna uh, Gashaka Kurumi. So we have only two Reps, Reps members and one senator as we speak. So what I find interesting is the fact that you are not blaming INEC for your loss. Uh, you know that what has happened is the internal party politics that has uh, divided the House very sharply and has resulted in the results that we're seeing, um, you know, playing out in Taraba. So what I want to know is, what are you going to be doing differently? Because I imagine that perhaps maybe APC members in Taraba might be sober, but the question is whether they are so bright, it will be enough for them to come together, or do you think that they will be too bitter and decide to go to other parties that are willing to, you know, take them in? I, I must be honest with you, APC is a household name in Taraba at the moment. Uh, I'm sure if we embark... That's a coming third? Yes, we are still determined. Elections are like that. You have uh, misgivings, you pay for it, then you reconcile, you rebuild your party, and then uh, you make a headway. For instance, uh, before 2016, you can't go to Southern Taraba and mention APC. You can't go there and talk about APC. I was in church one day, and the pastor was preaching against the party in my face. That is the level it was. But when we came in, we did our best. You can imagine doing our best, and today, APC has produced the only senator in Taraba. You okay. imagine that. So it's a matter of uh, putting your house in order. But I think they... at this moment, yeah. we should uh, start... Uh, yeah, the, the, the tribunals are going to be working on most of the losses and the gains. But I think uh, as a party, we should put our house in order and start working towards mm -hmm. the next elections. But how does it work in the party? I mean, can they trust you? Because, I mean, uh, you delivered your candidates... Others lost, others went to NMPP. So how, how is that all going to work when it comes to reconciliation? I was a candidate to bid for the governorship election. But uh, the way it went, I didn't just uh, uh, opt out. I decided to work for the party. I led to do I organize the biggest rally in Taraba for Tinubu Shetima. The biggest rally. And we got no dime from the party. Neither did we get a dime from the national secretariat. We contributed our funds and organized that rally. And I won in my, Tinubu won in my ward. He won in my local government. He won in, in overall. He did extremely very well because of that, even though I didn't get the ticket. So that is the spirit uh, of, uh, the, 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 in the spirit of reconciliation. We can still put our house in order and prepare for whatever that comes in the future as a party. All right, let's bring our colleagues in Lagos. Thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, well, for me, um, I'm wondering how the party is handling this, given how determinedly the party fought to retain um, Senator Boacha as its governorship candidate. And it's also curious that uh, Senator Boacha, you know, immediately put out a congratulatory message to the winner of that election. One would have thought that uh, he was going to uh, contest the outcome of the election um, following his loss at the polls. I'd like you to respond to, to these two gray areas. Yeah, when you come to in, a, in, a, in an election, how do you, uh, you have no option than to congratulate the winner if you are taught in the, in the elections. 
you can see the NMPP are resisting, but there is nothing he would have done. There is nothing Boacha would have done. There is nothing the APC would have done than to do what they have done. Because uh, you have a gap of over 100,000 votes between you and the winner. Uh, to play safe, the only option available for you is to uh, play in, and that is exactly what he has done. And of course, you know the circumstance under which his name came on the ballot, which I'm still contesting in the court as we speak. Uh, my matter came up yesterday, contesting his appearance on the ballot. After the Supreme Court judgment, uh, some things happened behind the scene, and uh, a lower court, a federal high court, Jalingo, gave an order, and INEC respected that order, and he appeared on the ballot. I mean, uh, that is what has surprised many people. But, but still, because the party has ardent followers, a lot of people went and voted APC not because they were supporting Boacha. They voted for APC because they are ardent followers of the party. Even if there was no candidate, I'm sure APC would have seen, APC would have seen gotten a lot of votes. APC would have gotten a lot of votes, even without a candidate, because of the level of... Uh, the followership and, and the court uh you know the litigations are my next bit of concern uh mr kente it's not just you know the other candidates the other aspirants rather who were contesting senator watcher's candidates he also had cases in court so what's the point of those cases now that the elections have been fought and won and a winner has emerged are you withdrawing them or are you going ahead with them yeah you know for in the course of justice you need to pursue justice to the end. Otherwise, it will not be delivered to you. I am contending and contesting the appearance of Santuimone Boacha on the ballot uh, as approved by the Supreme Court. The judgment says uh, he should be delisted. So for him to have appeared uh, on the ballot, Nigerians need to know. And then the uh, Court of Competent Jurisdiction need to make a pronouncement to the effect that uh, he was wrongly included in that ballot. That is very important. And then the contempt, uh, contempt of court. If a Supreme Court gave judgment, and at the end of the day, somebody goes to a lower court to obtain an order, and INEC respected that order, then we need to find out, at least for history, so that uh, in the future we can uh, try to uh, re-echo such a events when it becomes necessary. That is why I'm still in court. And uh, I, I still have those two cases, the contempt case and how he appeared on the ballot. I'm still pursuing them. And I'm adding a third case to it. Uh, having, I mean, how, if these two cases are resolved, then I know that Senator Boacha has altered a process of electing a governor in APC in Taraba. That will now come up as a fresh case because the electoral law 2022 makes provision for that. That where a, can where a person or a candidate derails a process, he must be punished. So what's the point of plans for reconciliation if those cases remain in court? Yeah, we can commence the processes of reconciliation while those cases go on. You know, justice needs to be done to all of us. Maybe the cases will be the highest point for reconciliation. Wouldn't that be self-contradictory, both for those who are planning reconciliation and for the party? Yeah, sometimes it's good to get to the root of a matter before you reconcile. If you don't find out uh, reasons why you had a conflict in the first place, it will be difficult to have a genuine reconciliation. So I think... Uh, uh, because we'll be preparing for elections in four years' time, 2027, uh, we can, even if the case will last the next six, seven months, and then while the reconciliation is going, going on in the other hand, we can be sorting out the unresolved issues in the various courts and then prepare for true reconciliation six months after. Interesting. So there's the both out of court settlement, in court settlement, everything playing together. But I'd like you to speak to this concern because uh, there are fears that this election, the outcome, uh, may have split uh, you know, Taraba State across religious lines. And I think it was evident in the way we saw uh, you know, people vote 
uh, for the PDP and the NNPP, seeing the endorsements that you know came before that election as well. Uh, is, is that a, a fear that you have, uh, really? Because we know that uh, Taraba is, is multi-religious uh, in, in that sense. And I think that the success or the prosperity of the state will thrive only if regardless of the religious differences, people come together. So uh, is that something that was evident during this election for you? Yeah, I can tell you that uh, uh, the votes that were turned out may, may give that impression, but I must be honest with you. The person that won the election won the elections with uh, the Muslim votes too. Being a Christian, both Christians and Muslims voted for the gentleman that won. And uh, in the same manner, uh, NNPP candidate also got votes from Christians. Uh, you can't rule out religious uh, uh, differences in a state like Taraba. But I assure you that uh, uh, the, the outcome of the elections uh, may not be uh, based on religion alone. Uh, uh, because I'm sure a lot of Muslims, I am aware of that because I have been in the field, a lot of Muslims voted for the winner of this election. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, I mean, you, in every family, virtually every family in Taraba, you find Muslims and Christians uh, alike doing things in the same way or in different ways. So I may not agree totally with you that uh, the votings were only uh, on religious lines. We had a level of neutrality in some places. Uh, Kefas, the winner won in five local governments in the north. He won in uh, four local governments in the central. And these two places, uh, some of those, in, like central, many of the local governments he won were uh, uh, dominantly uh, Muslim local governments, but he won in those local governments. So uh, yes and no, I can agree with you to an extent and also say no to what you have said. Well, those are not my thoughts, uh, really. Those are fears expressed to me by the people of Taraba. And, uh, you know, f as political leaders, uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that and how this will be handled. Uh, because for you, you don't see it as a big deal, but for the people, the perception might be different and it will be important to see how this is handled. But in any case, uh, your party, the APC, won at the national level. And um, I wonder what the what the plans are for you now, uh, questions about whether you'll be seeking to work with Senator Boacha, whether you'll be trying to even get the NMPP candidate back into the fold as part of the reconciliation plan. So uh, what is the political future for the APC uh, in Taraba looking like right now? What are your options, really? Yeah, the, the, the truth about it is that uh, um, in the spirit of reconciliation, uh, I, I think uh, that Boacha, Senator Boacha, should uh, uh, have a rethink on his approach and uh, allow the, uh, the majority interest of our people to play, I mean, to, to, uh, to, be, to be enforced. Uh, he should uh, be able to come into the mainstream of the party and uh, we should all put our hands together and see how we can do through the conciliation after the courts have determined our cases. And uh, the NNPP uh, candidate who also left us, he was one of the contestants in the APC, he left us. We are also uh, going to be working on him so that uh, uh, he could actually come into a national party. This is a party that won at the national level. Yeah, but the same policies is first of all local. If NNPP is peaceful and they are second, they have a closer chance of being first, why should they come to the APC? I must tell you that uh, the gentleman that left for NNPP only went there to contest elections. Okay. Now that the elections are going to be won or lost, or now that the elections are won and, lo won and lost, I'm sure he, he might be having everything to come back to his home. So if he comes back to his home, is he going to be a candidate? Because now there are so many people vying for that seat. I mean, if they give it to you, you I'm not sure you'll reject it. So why, why should he come and queue up if he's not guaranteed that he'll get the ticket? That, that is a decision for him to take. If he feels the NMPP is good for him, I feel the NMPP is a too small a house for a professor to go and run for election there and win. Uh, so but in that, we're in that, expecting in him that to small come house, Ghana that amount of votes and they <laughs> came second. Yeah, it's a piece the house of will get big. Yeah, it's one of those things. Uh, 
uh, I think he's, in fact, if he had won the election, I assure you he will ultimately come back to APC if he had won the election. Mm. But yourself, you'll be taking a shot at the governorship seat again, won't you? I can't say that for now. I would have to consult with my, uh, my, my followers. And if they say yes? Uh, of course, why not? I'm less than 60. I can still have a, have, a, have a shot on that. But again, there's an impression I want to clear in this interview or in this, uh, my appearance. Uh, my colleague and friend, Boacha, appeared here a couple of uh, weeks back and said that he won this, he won that. Uh, he won the senatorial, he won his senatorial district, he won this, he was, he was doing this and doing that. I want to put those records straight. That somebody that never went home to campaign in his ward, he couldn't campaign in his ward. How could you have won election without even going to see your people? We did our campaigns. I went to the five local governments of the South with the whole team, a very large team. We canvassed for votes. Okay. We monitored the election. We delivered the election. Our candidate won. Well, somebody will come on national television to tell people that he won this, he won since that. Since you say you're about to reconcile, so maybe... Yeah, but we should put the record straight. Maybe, we need you, to put table, the record straight. maybe you also table this the record. This is part of what we're even feeling bad. In fact, it's part of why the, his award suspended him. Okay. Because... Uh, All right, Chief. I'm sure that the you table that... It's like you are trying to cut me off. You don't want me to go no, to some no, We have to go now. We're out of time. <laughs> the, people, the people wrote us emails, <laughs> and we keep telling them we will take their emails. <laughs> okay. So they're looking at me now and saying, what's wrong with this man? Is he not going to read our emails? Uh, it's okay. So, you know... I thought you are cutting me off so that I shouldn't go to no, the No, you know, you said you consult with to. your people. Now, we, our people want us to read the emails, Chim, you know. So let's get to it, the, please. The, the value of the people is important. Well, Chief, Chief David Zabokente, thank you for coming on and all the best.